This episode of Life Hacker is brought to you by Netflix. Hi and welcome to Life Hacker. This week's episode is all about games. We're going to run down some of the best places to buy video games on the cheap, walk through how to build and overclock the perfect PC gaming system, use some of the gaming mechanics you see in video games to get things done in our real lives, turn your phone into a retro arcade, and more. So let's get started. Video games can get pretty expensive, sometimes costing upwards of $50 or $60, but fortunately there's some sites and services where you can get free to cheap games online. Here are some of our favorites. If you're a PC gamer, there are a ton of options. First up is the Humble Bundle, which has a pay what you want structure, so you can get a bunch of good games for a very low price. If you have the free app Steam, there are often a lot of good game deals, often times for free, like Portal 1 was available for free for a time, and now you can get Team Fortress 2 and play that without cost. Lastly, if you're into game console emulation, you can pick up a lot of free homebrew games online, but we'll talk a little bit about that in a later segment. If your PC can't keep up with all of the latest games that are coming out, Cloud Gaming Service on Live streams games from the cloud to your computer or to your TV using a set-top box and allows you to play a ton of different games for really cheap. A monthly subscription to OnLive is about $10, or you can rent individual games on demand for $5. Netflix-like game rental service Gamefly gives you access to a ton of games with a subscription to the service, but you can also buy their used games for significantly less than you would have to pay on the sticker price. Finally, if you can't kick the habit of buying new games as soon as they come out, Amazon Prime gives you free release day delivery on new games when they come out. You can also subsidize those new game purchases by selling back your old games to Amazon. So there you have it. There are a lot of resources out there to help you get your cheap gaming on. So check out the site for more details. If you're a PC gamer, your system can make the difference between a really great gaming experience and a laggy, jumpy, crappy experience. Luckily, you actually don't need to go spend thousands of dollars on a nice Alienware system, though. You can build your own and save a lot of money. When you're picking out components for your PC, you want to make sure you're thinking about what brings you the best gaming performance, which means your video card is probably the most important component you're going to buy. So there are a lot of areas you can skimp on this PC, but you probably don't want to skimp on the video card. To find out what video card is best for you, you can check out benchmarks online, like at anontech.com, where you can actually compare how different video cards fare in certain games. So if you're building a PC to play Battlefield 3, you just go to the site, punch in Battlefield 3, and you can see which card gives you the best performance to cost ratio. When it comes to processors, you don't need to go overboard. You don't need to buy an i7 because your games aren't going to use that many cores. An i5 should do you just fine. Lastly, we talk about SSDs a lot here at Lifehacker and how great they are, but it's important to note that they aren't going to improve your gaming experience that much. You might get faster loading times, but they're not going to make the game run any smoother, so if you're looking to cut costs, that might be one place to do it. The great part about building your own PC is that when it comes time to upgrade, you'll be comfortable cracking it open and swapping out parts. Say for example a new game comes out and your video card isn't up to snuff, you can buy a new video card, swap it in, still play the game, and you don't need to buy a whole new computer. Building your own computer isn't that hard, but if it's your first time, be sure to check out our night school guide to picking out your parts and putting it all together. So whether you've built a new PC or you're trying to get as much power out of an old PC as possible, you can overclock both your video card and your processor, that is, push them farther than the manufacturers intended, to get the best gaming experience possible. Here's how to do it. Overclocking your video card is the most effective way to eke out some extra performance, and it's pretty easy to do. Just download a tool like EVGA Precision and slowly ramp up each of its clock speeds. After raising one by five or 10 megahertz, run a benchmarking program like Furmark. Scan the screen for artifacts, distortions in the graphics, and once you see them, back off to your last successful clock speed and move on to the next one. Once you've got them all as high as you can go, you're good. Make sure to keep an eye on your card's temperatures too. You definitely want to keep them under 90 degrees Celsius, or even lower if you want to be conservative. If it gets too hot, you can always ramp up the fan speed manually with your overclocking program. Overclocking your processor is similar, but a bit more complicated. 
You'll need to boot into your BIOS to do it, and the settings will differ depending on what specific processor you have, so Google around for a guide to your model. Use a program like Prime95 to stress test your card between each settings tweak, and make sure it doesn't crash. Again, keep an eye on your temperatures, and make sure they aren't getting anywhere near your processor's threshold. If your processor is getting too hot before you reach your overclocking goal, you can always buy a better heatsink and more fans to better cool it down. The performance differences won't necessarily be night and day, but it can make a lot of games a little bit more playable. Just remember, stay within the limits of your hardware, make sure everything's adequately cooled, and check out the link for more information on how to do it. This week on Lifehacker, we walk through how to save money on your cell phone plan by using your smartphone without the pricey data plan. If you spend the majority of your time within range of a friendly Wi-Fi access point, the up to and over $30 a month data plans offered by various carriers aren't necessarily worth the price tag. And if you're lucky, you can get away with using your phone without that spendy data plan. Hit up the post to get a better understanding of your options. After a week getting comfortable with the new Gmail redesign, we've still got a few annoyances here and there. To address them, Whitson rounded up the best scripts for fixing Gmail's new pain points, including interface tweaks that make it easier to find buttons, scroll bars, and unread messages in the new, almost blindingly white interface. Finally, Photoshop is a powerful tool, but let's face it, most of us are more interested in touching up the occasional zit than we are doing professional image editing. Adam Dodges walked through a handful of common image editing tricks anyone can use, from covering up a pimple to removing people from photographs and more. Hit up the full post for all the details. Video games are really good at making you feel like you've accomplished something when you've done nothing because they use things like achievements. Uh, now, lots of different apps and services use achievements and badges to motivate you to come back and keep using them. Here are a few of our favorite apps that use gamification to motivate you to do things that are actually good for you. For example, web app Photocracy encourages you to level up your exercise by giving you achievements and tracking your progress on your exercises on a leaderboard. Basically, you sign up for Photocracy and each time you exercise, you log what you've done. Uh, the service then will uh, reward you for what you've done and it will motivate you to pick up in areas where you may be lagging and uh, reward you for the things that you've done really well. The same basic ideas are applied to a ton of different tools. For example, the iPhone app Epic Win is a role-playing game for your to-do list. Web app Chore Wars lets everyone in your household gain experience points for doing household work. And email app Zero Boxer rewards you points for clearing out your Gmail inbox. So there you have it. Games don't just have to be a waste of time, they can also help you get stuff done. So there are a lot of really great modern games out now, but if you want to relive some of the classics from your past, you can actually do so using game emulation on your mobile device. Here's how it works. To get started with emulation, you'll need two things. An emulator, which is a program on your device that mimics an old school video game system like a Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis. And you'll need ROMs, individual files which correspond to the games for those systems. You can find ROMs pretty much anywhere on the net. Just search Google for the game you're looking for, download it to your device, and start playing. Emulation is really easy on Android because you can just download your emulators and get right to it. On the iPhone, you have to jailbreak, but once you do that, emulation is pretty much just as simple. You just get your emulators on Cydia, the jailbreak app store, and you're ready to go. One thing you can do to make your gaming experience a whole lot better is use an external controller. That means using a Bluetooth Wiimote, a PS3 controller, or even some third-party option like the iControl pad. You can also get a stick-on joystick for your tablet or smartphone that will let you control just like an old-school arcade. There are tons of great emulators on every platform, so hit up the link on your screen to check out some of our favorites. It's time to thank this episode's sponsor, Netflix. You guys know Netflix, right? They're the world's largest subscription service, instantly streaming TV episodes and movies directly to you. Members can instantly watch thousands of titles on a bunch of devices, including the Xbox 360, Sony's PS3, the Nintendo Wii, and way more. As a Netflix Unlimited member, you can instantly watch as many titles as you want for one low monthly price, without ever having to worry about late fees or due dates. And for a limited time, Lifehacker viewers and new Netflix members can get a 30-day trial right now when they go to netflix.com slash lifehacker. Hacker. You'll be supporting the show, and you're going to open yourself up to a vast library of quality entertainment. So just go to netflix.com slash lifehacker right now. 
As your video card gets older, there are a lot of different ways it can fail, but one of the common ways is that those solder joints become loose and you might notice fuzziness on your screen or just no screen at all. It's tragic, but you're not completely out of luck. One of the ways you can save that dying video card is by popping it in the oven. So the first thing you want to do is remove the heatsink and any other plastic parts from your graphics card because you don't want those melting all over everything in the oven. Then get a baking sheet with some tin foil and a few tin foil balls. Place those on the baking sheet and then place your video card on top of those so that the video card isn't touching the baking sheet itself. Make sure the chip side of the graphics card is facing up because if not, the chip will fall off when the solder joints melt. Preheat your oven to 385 degrees Fahrenheit and once it's ready, pop in the video card for 8 to 12 minutes. Once it's done, you can pull it out of the oven, let it cool for a while, then put your heatsink back on and pop it back in your machine to see if it works. It's not going to save every video card out there. After all, there are any number of reasons your video card could have failed. But if your card's about to bite the dust anyway, it's a good last ditch effort. So good luck. All right, it's time for the downloads of the day. Let's see what we've got. First up, we've got Steam. I mentioned this earlier as a great way to find cheap or free games, but it's actually an excellent way to download and play games as well. It'll let you re-download any purchased games should you actually delete them, save your games online in certain cases, and even let you connect with other players. We also talked a lot about emulators on your mobile phone, and there are plenty of great ones to choose from on all platforms. For Super Nintendo, we like SNES 9X on all platforms, both desktop and mobile. For regular Nintendo, we like Nestopia on the desktop, NESoid on Android, and NES for iPhone on, well, you guessed it, iPhone. We also have picks for non-Nintendo systems like the Sega Genesis and Sony PlayStation, so check out the posts on your screen for more information. If you're a Windows user looking to overclock your graphics card, there are two tools you'll want to check out, Precision and Afterburner. They're essentially the same program and work with pretty much any graphics card regardless of the manufacturer. Finally, we have graphics card status for Mac. If you've got a MacBook Pro with two graphics cards and you want to quickly switch between them when you need the extra power for your games, this little micro app will put a toggle switch in your Mac's menu bar. That's it for this week, and remember, winners don't use drugs. See you next time. <laughs>